to agenda item 5C. This is REZ 2015-08, Edwards Jennings LLC, the Madison Highway, Limeburger Drive, R10 to CG. Mr. Davenport. Yes, sir. Subject property on the corner of Madison and Lineberger requested to go from its residential states, currently developed with one house. The applicant is requesting uh, a commercial zoning for non-residential development. Um, I believe that the applicant's agent is here tonight to address any questions the commission might have. Ultimately, staff felt like we could get to approval with two conditions. The planning commission heard from an adjacent neighbor, uh, and they added three conditions to that. And since that time, I don't have any, um, any updates to report for the commission at this time. I do believe it's ready for your consideration tonight, should you want to move forward. Okay. Commissioner, do we have any questions for Mr. Dabney? Jason, um, are, are, you, are you asking if we want all five conditions listed? Yes, this? sir. We, I know there's various, various conditions that have been thrown out. I'll, I'll have the ones on the screen. The first two are what staff, um, the majority of staff in a 6-1 vote agreed on. Three, four, and five are variations of what the Planning Commission approved to move forward for your consideration tonight. I say variations because the underlying language was something that staff changed to try to tighten them up and make them stronger because they did the conditions as a part of the meeting uh, at their last regular meeting in, in April, or in, I'm sorry, in March. So that's what you have is two staff recommended, three planning commission recommended, but it's ultimately up to the commission whether they want to carry one or, or none of, of the considerations along. Okay. Any other questions? Jason, or <clears throat> any of these last three conditions are they something that are these items that we would typically see in a gc or a cg mm -hmm. zoning um for the i anticipate the applicants if there's not a condition for i think they probably would have built a fence whether it was conditioned or not because i think they want to reduce the buffer size to 15 feet which is what happens when you build a fence i don't think uh, lighting would have been a requirement for a condition. I don't think it would have been an issue, but certainly it will tie that up. And then hours of operation, we do have hours of operation regarding our noise ordinance, but for this use and this zoning, I don't anticipate we have a limit on their hours of operation from 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. So for, for those conditions, no, no, sir. I don't think we would have very explicitly to require them to meet those without, without a condition. Okay. And, and I guess that was part of my question on that number five, because, I mean, closing at 8 o'clock, I, I realize, you know, from some businesses that might not be a problem, but mm -hmm. other businesses might need beyond 8 o'clock, uh, to be honest with you. But that's my thoughts. Well, I just don't particularly like to see a rezoning that's got this many conditions on it, it's if we lot. can help it. You know? okay. Any other questions for Mr. Dad? <clears throat> okay. We'll uh, now move over to the public participation portion of it and is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request please come forward and state your name and address please good evening my name is ernestine thurston and i uh, live in the, the i own the property at 1413 lineberger drive that's adjacent to the requested property to be rezoned. And um, I made my um, comments to the um, board regarding the rezoning of the property because it was so close to my property line. And now when I bought the property in the area, I bought it because it was a residential area. And uh, there's kids there and there's families there and all that property there is, is residential and on, um, Gil Harbin, that's that that's all commercial. So the property that's in back of me is all that's that whole area is on commercial. But the property that's um, I guess that would be south, north of uh, Gil Harbin. That's 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 that area where I live is not residential. And there's kids there. There's uh, new families there. And I think that with uh, especially with the commercial zoning, a uh, general commercial zoning and you can put any kind of building there, that that not only would be a, a disservice to the community, I think, but also affect the property and uh, affect the, the area and the neighborhood in general. 
with the children and the noise and the, and the traffic that's coming in. And it could be um, a deterrent for the kids in the, in the community. So that was one of my, uh, that's one of the reasons why I oppose the rezoning because when I purchased the property, I thought it was gonna always be residential. And um, just like the guy made the case about the agriculture, he bought the property because he wanted it to be agricultural. And he, uh, he didn't want it to be anything else. Well, you know, I bought that home because that was a residential community. So I just wanted to make my case and okay. save my point. Do we have any questions for the speaker? Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Do you live in the property? I, I it's like um, <coughs> vacation, so I'm there like, you know, six months. And I, I live in my residential addresses in Florida, but I am planning within the next year to physically actually relocate now that I've retired, and that's why I bought the property. Um, so I will definitely be actually living in it all the time. Now I use it like vacation property, and I come like three to six months a year. Gotcha. But I will definitely be living there full time after so, this. But it's not it's not rental property. No, it's either. not. No, it's, okay. it's actually. And when did you purchase it? About five years ago. <coughs> okay. okay. Any other questions? I wanted to know exactly which partial she was talking about. I, I don't know. Uh, it kind of looks like it's got a. Right behind. It should be to the east, if I recall. Oh, it's to the east of it. It's behind it. Yeah, behind it. Yeah. Okay. Commission, Commissioner, it is, um, her property is right to the east, sir. And that's that trucking company on the other side, north of it. Yeah, the trucking company, yeah, that's <clears throat> the actual company is Gil Harbin and the office to that company is based in Madison Hamlet. But the okay. I have no any other questions. questions. I've got a question for okay. Mr. Davenport. Are there any encroachment issues? Well, let's, let's get to Mr. Davenport as soon okay. as we finish I'm sorry. up. With Mr. I'm sorry. Okay. okay. Are there any other questions for Ms. Thurston? Okay. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Right, hearing none, is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address, please. My name is Kevin Hollis, 3750 Boren Pond Road. I'm here basically to try to answer any questions you may have. Okay. Do we have any questions for Mr. Hollis? Um, I, I, what type of business is going to be there? Well, we. Per the recommendation of the staff, we we are uh, pursuing the CG zoning um, in an effort to remain sensitive to the existing residential area. Um, the zoning class also allows us enough possibilities to warrant the significant investment we'll make. So the CG zoning, our first choice would have been CH, and there is CH already zoned along that highway. There's also CC and CG uh, on these Madison lots that are facing the highway. So it appeared to us that the neighborhood is already in transition along that corridor. Um, matter of fact, I believe there's a parcel island zone CC in the middle of the neighborhood. So we, we felt with ours being uh, directly adjacent to a, a different type zoning, you know, one of heavy manufacturing M2, that CG was certainly reasonable because it, we were a little bit closer into the neighborhood than they were. <coughs> Mr. Hollis, do you anticipate this being a, a multi-tenant no. property? I know it's hard to tell at this point. It's hard to tell when you're speculative. Our anticipation is to be something along the lines of an electrical or plumbing company or something along those lines um, be given that area and and what the demographics are of that area and what uh, type services are offered in that area we're certainly not looking to put some high noise type uh, operation and as far as the condition goes we yeah we're, we want to remain sensitive to the neighborhood we, we agree to the lighting we agree to the fence which is really a requirement the ULDC anyway and 
Um, we've not, you know, the operating hours pretty much speak for themselves. The type of businesses we'll be anticipate going in there will be at normal business hours like most are. Um, as far as facing the building towards Madison Highway, I'm not sure I see the logic in that, but, but uh, we'll certainly do what we can to, to remain sensitive to the neighborhood. Okay. okay. Any other questions from Mr. Hobbs? Okay. Thanks, sir. Is there anyone else in the audience who would like to speak in favor of this request? Okay. Hearing none, we'll close the public participation portion of it and now turn it back over to the commissioners for questions. I, I, want, I had two questions for Jason. Um, the address for this property. It's Madison Highway, correct? Yes, sir. The the one that fronts the hot property, I do believe it's Madison Highway. Okay. And then the other thing may be um, Ms. Braswell may. Are there any encroachment issues related to the property adjacent? I mean, it just looks like based on that map that we saw that that, that house is hugging, if you will, for lack of better words, the property uh, line. Do y'all know if there's any encroachment issues there? Not okay. Commissioner, the survey shows the fence as right on the property line, but we don't show where the surveyor identified a structure that was over encroaching on the property line. Okay. No other questions. Thank you. Good. Any other questions? Okay. Commissioners, I'll turn it back over to you now for your consideration. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the applicant's request um, with condition number one. Okay. We have a motion to approve the request with condition number one. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none, we'll call the vote. All in favor, signify by aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign. Hearing none, the motion carries. Okay, let's move on.